Alright guys, this is going to be another video here. Uh, it's not part of uh, any series or anything, it's just an individual video. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how to convert forge power stroke uh, connecting rods over to fit into an IDI. Um, these are just going to be the, the turbo pin size. Uh, it's actually for a customer rebuilding his his engine and he wants to go with a bigger bottom end on it. and so. Um, these are a good replacement for the factory turbo rods if you can't find them. Um, it does require a, a rotating assembly rebalance, um, but it does allow you to run the bigger pin factory turbo pistons. Um, basically these rods here, um, I've, um, I have actually purchased these off eBay and I would have shown you, I've, I've broken them down, uh, I pulled them all apart, all the components apart in them and everything. Uh, pop the bushings out, solvent tanked them, um, basically prepped them, inspected them, um, that sort of thing. I would have shown that on camera, but uh, the person that I bought these from mixed up all the main caps, and it took me about an hour to, to get everything straightened out. So I figured instead of boring you guys with, with that sort of stuff, I'd just start from here. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to take and uh, we're going to start off by, uh, we're going to go through and media blast these things. Um, just to, to get them cleaned up um, and then uh, we'll go through and uh, we'll narrow them up to the IDI spec um, so that way you can run them on an IDI crank uh, and then uh, following that um, what we'll do is we'll uh, basically resize the big end so we'll have to pop all the bolts out and all that stuff out again and uh, and resize the cap and the rod um, and then we will uh, we will take it to the over to the rod hone um, size the big end for what it's supposed to be um, to fit the bearing and for proper oil clearance and all that and uh, once that's done we'll take it back over to the mill um, actually we won't we, we will take it over and uh, press in the new bushings and then we'll take it to the mill um, do a a pre uh, a pre bore on the uh, on the on the pin side um, just to get it closer to uh, um, closer to spec that way we can take it over and hone the finished amount out on the rod machine as well and that'll complete the the, the whole uh, the whole uh, you know recondition here so go ahead and stay tuned um, what I'm going to do is take this thing over to the uh, take these over to the Boston cabinet and we'll go ahead and clean them all up and uh, go from there
Okay, now that we got the rods all cleaned up, um, went ahead, obviously you saw there, we uh, went and media blasted them. Um, I gave them another once over, make sure there wasn't any flaws in the, in the rods or anything like that. Um, they are a forging, so they're obviously less likely to crack than a casting. Um, but if you, if you saw anything that may have looked like a crack, it might be a good idea to magnaflex it just, just because. Uh, but being that it's a forging, um, you tend not to have issues with cracking. Um, now, uh, basically, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to take and, uh, the large end of the rod. It's offset slightly, you can see. Um, and uh, we're going to take and we're going to cut that side down. Um, we'll go back and we'll put a chamfer on it, but we're going to switch sides with this. So, um, basically, this side is the big chamfer right now. There's two chamfers. The big chamfer goes on the on the the outboard side of the crank um, and the small chamfer goes on adjacent to the other rod. So the big chamfer on this, we're actually going to take and move to the other side and this side will get the small chamfer. So we're going to chop this side down. We will chamfer the small side on the side we cut down and, uh, and we'll come back on this side and put a large chamfer on it. And basically it just makes it, that's what makes it compatible with the IDI. Um, uh, you do use the power struck bearing in these. Um, uh, that's how it's all aligned and the, the power strip bearing is actually 70 thousandths wider so you actually get more bearing surface area which is a good thing so um, just as a side note here uh, these are the pistons that, the, that we'll be running on them uh, these are ceramic coated uh, turbo turbo pin size um, but these will be going to the customer with the rods um, so what we'll do is uh, next uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll set the rods up on the milling machine and uh, everything we do here in this shop aside from the plasma table is all conventional machining so I don't I don't have a CNC machine in the shop um, I do I, I could farm them out if I wanted to but um, this sort of stuff we like to do in-house in it's just uh, you do it all at one time and, and you know everything's consistent and um, that's kind of how it goes so go ahead and get this up on the milling machine and go from there Okay, so uh, basically starting off this dimension here, the width on the rod is one inch, 229 thousandths. Um, that's the power stroke width of the rod. Um, what we have to drop it down to to make it fit on the IDI crank is 1.098. So um, we'll be taking off roughly 130, 131 thousandths. Um, essentially, uh, we're just going to Gonna go ahead and fly cut it here with face mill, and uh, and uh, here we go. So I'm just gonna take thirty thousand cuts off of it. So 
one thing I forgot to mention here that I wanted to, to show too, and I, you probably won't be able to see it very well, but uh, and I could go through. I'm not going to take the camera off the tripod, but I will explain it. Um, so uh, we basically leave this rotary table up here on the mill all the time. It's dialed in. Um, essentially, uh, what you do, um, so we know that this this is is, is flat. And realistically, we start off with a surface anyway. Um, everything's indexed off that surface. So when we when we go ahead and we cut the uh, resize the big end, um, we make sure that it's it's uh, completely perpendicular to that surface. And then we come back through, and I have a, a mandrel that we set it up on, and uh, and that's how we determine um, basically when we go and bore the pin out, so that that these two are completely parallel. And after we're done resizing everything on the hone. Um, basically, what we do is come through, and uh, and we have an inspection station, and in a similar way um, to to what we do in the inspection station is a light test. We go through and we check the pin, and as long as it passes the light test, it doesn't you know it doesn't. You'll see you'll see later in the video. But same thing here. We go through and we check on each jaw, um, make sure that we can't get any light through. So this is fully seated, completely flat on the dialed in uh, three jaw here. Um, and so that that way we know everything's everything's uh, right there where it should be. So, anyway, back to cutting. So now we'll take a quick measurement just to see exactly where we're at here. So we know exactly how much to, to take off. is telling me we got 1.106 107 six and a half seven 105 okay these calipers close enough it's so 1.105 so I'm looking to take seven off 
Seven thousand. So that's what we'll do. Okay. Point zero nine eight, right where we should be. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, pop this one off here, uh, do the other eight rods, or the other seven rods, excuse me, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll do the chamfers. So, um, and uh, you may ask, you know, well, why not do uh, everything at once? Um, because setup specific you know so you don't have to change that it's easier to change the part and dial the part in here than it is to to swap setups for every part so a little bit quicker um, and on that note too as far as quickness some of you may be uh, looking at the the speed and feed of this thing and obviously I got this big gnarly face cutter here um, it's capable of a lot a lot uh, a lot more material removal removal than that but uh, um, we've noticed that if you really hog these things out, that uh, that the bit life on those things suffers a whole bunch. So it's not like a CNC machine where you have flood coolant and um, you know you can you can have a lot more, a lot better tool life and stuff. We're doing it on a on a manual machine like this, sometimes you got to make make a little compromise. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, it doesn't take that much extra time. So uh, you kind of got the process there. So we'll go ahead and uh, do the other do the other seven, and then uh, come back and do the chamfers. All right, guys. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and cut the chamfers now. Um, this is the last rod I cut. I haven't even removed it from the from the rotary table yet. Um, not a real point too. Um, so basically, uh, what we have here is a 90 degree carbide cutter, um, carbide end mill, and uh, I have my quill set all the way down. And uh, normally you wouldn't do that, but in this case, I'm using it to to be it for clearance. Basically, I'm gonna raise it up put another rod on and then all I'll have to do is simply come down with the quill right into place and uh, it'll it'll be consistent from rod to rod so what we're gonna do um, is we'll turn the machine on um, I'll raise the RPM a little bit here and uh, I'm gonna bring the knee up to where it just barely touches the rod and then we're gonna go ahead and, and raise it up another 25 thousandths and that should put a 35 thousandth chamfer on it so um, go ahead and do that
Okay, now we'll flip the rod over. <clears throat> Same thing, light test. Okay, so bring this back down and basically then we're going to raise our, our knee up to 50 thousandths. And that's going to give us the big chamfer. So. Includes how you do the chamfers here. Okay, so I'll go through and finish up these, and then we'll check back in with you after I'm done. All right, and there you have it. IDI sized power stroke forged rods. So now it's basically just your standard, uh, um, you know, re rod reconditioned from this point on. So next part we'll show you is uh, breaking them down, uh, shaving the cap in the rod, and uh, sizing the big end. Stay tuned. Okay. So now we're going to take the rods here and uh, I'll have to break them back down, um, pop the bolts out, uh, and then we're going to take them and uh, shave the end. Uh, that takes a little bit of material off, it closes up the bore um, just enough so that we can get a good hone job on it so it comes out um, fresh, basically to spec. So.
about a thousandth off each, each side. Um, now what we'll do is first of all Bolts back in. Grunge on there. So we assemble. I'm going to have to chase the end of that one. But you get the idea. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go through and I'll do the other seven. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll torque them up uh, to spec. So, on these, because they're the power stroke rods, they use the power stroke fasteners. Um, they go by power stroke rod bolt torque. So, uh, um, I believe, right off the top of my head, I believe that's 63. If uh, I'll, I'll check that out and and uh, correct it if I'm if I'm wrong. But um, so there's a little bit more torque on these two. They're a bigger fastener than the IDI fastener. So um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up, um, and then uh, and then we'll go over to the rod machine here and we'll hone the big end. All right, here we are at the at the rod machine. We're gonna pulling the big end of the rod. Um, uh, I have it pretty much set up now. Um, one thing I want to show you is um, I, I've already done two over there, those two, um, just uh, so I can show you on the uh, on our gauge over here. Uh, basically what we have is, is this old bent up funny guy right here. We've uh, We've sized this and we use this as a gauge to set our gauge at zero. And then we'll go in. We know that this is the right dimension, so we go in here and we have something to base base off of, basically. Shoot for zero. So um, I'll show you what the gauge looks like. So you can see you have the red and the green there. Your red is your interference fit and your green is your clearance. So we go and we set that that to zero and so our, we're aiming for zero on this. Now when you go in and do the pin end, what we do is because we have these here, and I'll show you more of that later, but um, we'll, actually, we'll actually fit it for a clearance. So anyway, um, I'll show you how we go ahead and, and do the big end of the, of the rod here and we'll go from there. I'm holding it 
down towards the big end. You don't want to hold it at the small end because you have the chance of, of bell mouthing the bore here. So the whole idea is you want a nice straight bore. Do that, flip it over. And if this little gauge here moves down as you go, and it can tell you whereabouts how much material you're taking off. This gives you a reference. It's not super accurate, but it gives you a reference anyway. We're cutting pressure up a little bit. Let's see what we got though. Dow honed surface all the way around. So this is to size. It means our oil clearance is uh, oil bearing clearance. Bearing oil clearance should be all right um, with that there. But anyway, we'll go ahead and finish up these other ones and uh, go from there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll get going on the uh, um, on the small end. Okay, here we are at the milling machine. Um, have the rod fixture up in here. Uh, so basically, what what we do is we clamp the rod onto this mandrel here. Um, we've took taken and dialed in 
the edges of the mandrel with the Z axis here. So um, basically that ensures that when we, we bore the rod itself um, that both, both bores are parallel to each other. So um, go ahead and we'll clamp the rod up in here. Um, we'll dial it in with the coax just so we know where we're at and uh, um, swap the coax out for the boring bar and uh, show you the process. So you can see that's really rigid. Um, normally, uh, when you machine something, you, you don't want something to, to sit out here like this. Um, so, you know, you guys that are machinists watching this may laugh a little bit at this, but it, it's actually a really rigid setup for, for doing this. All we're, we're taking like 10 thousandths off the inside of this. So it's not, you know, it's not like we're hogging a bunch of material out. It, it's plenty rigid for the amount of material that we're removing. So. Um, so anyway,
Okay, so that's within a half hour round right there, dialed in on the center of that. So, zero out. Now some shops they have simpler setups than this. I mean, you can have a fixture on the on the bed of the mill that uh, has a locating pin and all that, and that's might be good enough for for most shops. Not saying that there's anything wrong with doing it that way. That's probably the majority of the way that, that uh, shops do it. But I like to be more accurate here um, and make sure that the that we're exactly center on that bushing that way you're not weakening one side of the bushing or the other you know everything's dead center on with the bore so um, so we will drop the boring head in now And uh, this here isn't isn't something that <laughs> it's holding anything together. This is actually uh, we use this to balance out the assembly. So when it's cutting, it doesn't um, uh, you know throw itself out of balance at RPM basically. So it's a balance uh, it's a balance weight. So. Our bore diameter looks like uh, 1.278. Wait, no, 1.28. 1.284. So you want to leave about. Leaves us about ten thousandths to pull out total, which is pretty easy on uh, on the softer material here. So what I'll probably do is I'm going to run this back through with the feed.
so uh, here's the final process for the rods here. Um, I take and uh, I have my uh, the other mandrel set up here, honing mandrel, um, and uh, I have my eight rods here. As you can see, we pre-sized them over on the mill, so um, they're they're oh right in the I would say three to four um, thou off from where we need them range. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll hone them and uh and then we'll we'll test fit them with a pin and uh you you can basically we'll we'll get it into size and then then you do a you put the pin in it and just test it out but um here we go Cutting pressure down a little bit. Check. So that, yeah, so you're two and a half there to get to zero, and then there's another thou, thou in, in clearance, so. Truing, truing tool here. It basically straightens your stones, make sure that they're even.
tens clearance there, shooting for one one thou clearance. seven and we'll go through and we'll inspect them all and uh, show you how we go about doing that. Okay, so now inspection time. Um, basically, what we're after is this this fixture right here. Basically, indexes off your main or your rod your rod uh, bearing diameter here, uh, and um, basically uh, we take and we put a piston pin in this end, and then we check it with a light test with this piece here. So we'll check it this way and we'll check it this way and uh, you shouldn't be able to see any light through there. Now this requires us to be very clean, um, the slightest speck can throw off, um, can throw off your, uh, your light test here, but I'll show you how we do it. This thing, that holds it in there, you just want to make sure that it's, it's stable. In fact, let me double check this. It's not moving around on you. Okay. Check this. Okay, here's a flashlight. Essentially what we want to do is let's get this out a little bit, it's a little tight. So, we'll make sure that that's seated. Okay. 
come in here like this, move our pin, and you shouldn't be able to see any light between this tool and the pin. So we're good there on twist. We'll check this one. And no light through there. So if you were to see light between this tool and that, that means that you're not parallel with this bore and your piston would be cocked in the bore or twisted. Twist isn't as much of a concern as as uh, um, as the uh, what would you call it with the uh, the lateral alignment, I guess, um, because that throws your your piston off in the bore and you get unusual wear characteristics. But so we check this in and all every single rod that we do with and it's set up on this fixture here, um, we make sure that you can't see light through it. So if if we did see light, we'd have to go through and actually pop the bushing out and redo the remachine the bushing in, which is a big pain in the butt. So that's why it, it helps having. Um, basically helps having um, you know setting up things properly and making sure everything's true and if you actually go through and check a factory one they're out a mile you know so they're not nearly as, as uh, um, you know from the factory not nearly as good as, as like we like to do these here but um, essentially across this whole pin spec on this is like a thousandth over the no actually I think it's even worse than that I think in the book it's like a thousandth over six inches or something like that which is insane um, but uh, but the quick and easy way to test it is, is with the light test, and obviously if you can't see light through it, then it's it's right where it should be. So, But that kind of concludes this. Um, uh, rods themselves came out really nice. Machining, all the pins came out good. Um, uh, this will go to a customer with a set of our ceramic coated pistons and uh, a bunch of other stuff um, for his current engine build. So. Um, I'm sure he will view this video and uh, and uh, he'll actually see the see the uh, the finished product. So anyway, uh, this concludes the 7.3 power stroke rod conversion. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks guys.